Secretary Kerry, I want to read part of your statement back to you. Instead of convening a kangaroo court, the president might want to talk with the educated adults he wants trusted to fill his top national security positions. It sounds like you're questioning the credentials of the president's advisors currently, but I don't think we should question your credentials today. Isn't it true you have a science degree from Yale? What's that? Bachelor of Arts degree. Is it a political science degree? Yes, political science. So how do you get a regret. Bachelor of Arts in a science? Well, it's liberal arts education and degree. It's a bachelor. Okay, so it's not really science. So I think it's somewhat appropriate that somebody with a pseudoscience degree is here pushing pseudoscience in front of our committee today. I want to ask you. Are you serious? I mean, this I, is really a me, serious happening here. You know what? It is, it is serious. You're calling the president's cabinet a kangaroo court. Is that serious? I'm not calling his cabinet a kangaroo court. I'm calling this committee that he's putting together a kangaroo committee. What, are you saying that he doesn't have educated adults there now? I don't know who it has yet because it's secret. Well, you said it in your testimony. Why would he have to have a secret saying? analysis of climate change? Let me ask Why you. Does Let the me ask, let's get back to, to the it science secret. of it. Let's get back to the science of it. But it's not science. You're not quoting science. I, I, well, you're the science expert. You got the political science degree. Look, let me ask you this. What's the consensus on parts per million of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere? About 406, 406 today. Okay, 406. Are you aware... 350 that being the level that scientists have said is dangerous. Okay, are you aware? 350 is dangerous. Wow. Are you aware that since mammals have walked the planet... The average has been over a thousand parts per million. Yeah, but we weren't walking the planet. It, it, it's. Um, let me just share with you that we now know that definitively, at no point during the least the past eight hundred thousand years has atmospheric CO two been as high as it is today. You, you go. When back. I was in the South Pole, when I was I wasn't at the South Pole. When I was in McBurdo, we couldn't get to the South Pole because the weather. But I was given a vial of air which said on it, cleanest air in the world. It was 401.6 parts per million. That is 50 parts per million already over what the, scientists the, say. The reason accepted. you chose 800,000 years ago is because for 200 million years before that, it was greater than, the, than it is today. And I'm going to submit there, for the record. Yeah, but there weren't human beings. I mean, there was a different world, folks. We didn't have 7 well, billion people. So how did it get to 2,000 parts per million if we humans weren't here? Because there were all kinds of geologic events happening on Earth which spewed did up. Did geology on... stop when we got on the planet? Mr. Chairman, I, I, <laughs> this is just not a serious conversation. Your, your testimony is not serious. <laughs> I agree. When you, can't, when you can't answer the question, that's the best answer you got. I, I did I, answer. I submit for the record uh, an article called The CO2 Deficit. Thank you. Secretary Kerry, what is your, you avoided my uh, colleague's question about how do you pay for it, but I want to ask, what is your solution to comply with the Paris Accord requirements? Like, what would you do? I, I, I beg to differ with you. I did not avoid the question. I said there are many ways to pay for it. He just asked for one. What, well, I did. I talked about the carbon pricing is one way to pay for change. Uh, there are all kinds of other things we could do. One would be to not give a billion do trillion dollars worth of tax benefits to the top 1% of Americans. I'm one of them. So I didn't deserve to get that tax cut. Nobody did in this country at the expense of average folks who can't make ends meet. So that would be a fair way to start. You don't want to uh, politicize this, but you just played the 1% card. <laughs> no, I actually played a moral judgment about what is appropriate in building a civil society. Well, what, That's what, what I my did. colleague Comer uh, that is from Kentucky a, knows is that this will fall on the poorest of the poor. It's regressive no, when you wrong. raise the you're price of energy in Kentucky or Massachusetts or Pennsylvania or France or wherever, Congressman, whichever house you're staying in. That is absolutely incorrect that it would fall on the poorest people because if you do it right, which hasn't been done here for a little while, if you look at the tax legislation. There are all kinds of ways to make sure that people at the bottom end, people struggling to get into the middle class, can be rewarded. 
And that's not what's happened. So soak the If you rich. look at the distribution, we have the most unequal distribution of income in America that we've had since the 1920s when we didn't have an income tax. We have a country in which 51% of America's income is going to 1% of Americans. That is not a sustainable political equation. We have a people country. Need to stop you want to use 1920 as the, the benchmark. The gentleman's time has expired. People in this country are far better. The gentleman's time has expired.